The views expressed in the following program do not necessarily represent the views of the staff and management of WVUA 23. Bringing you analysis and insight into the Crimson Tide, your Crimson cover hosts, John Copeland, Mike Parker, and Chase Goodbread, sponsored by Burnham Hawn and by Crimson Village. Welcome into Crimson Cover Television on WVUA 23. I'm Chase Goodbread, sports columnist with the Tuscaloosa News, joined as always by John Copeland, the former Alabama All-American defensive end. Mike Parker, our third co-host, unable to be with us tonight. We'll hear from Mike a little bit later in the Parker's Point segment. we got a whole lot to get to on this edition of CCTV beginning with a look at uh, the Crimson Tide wide receivers for this fall as we continue our look position by position at the UA football program throughout the summer. The College Football Hall of Fame ballot is out. We'll touch on that. Tennessee Volunteers preview coming at you a little later in the program as well. We're going team by team throughout the summer on uh, uh, previews and, of course, the recruiting update. Some playoff dates coming for the college football playoff. We got a mailbag. Who knows, John, if we'll even be able to get to it all. We'll give it a best shot uh, we can, but uh, we'll start with a look at these Alabama wide receivers for 2024, taking a look at the Crimson Tide. We, we're moving through the offense, right, John? We started with quarterbacks. We hit the running backs last week. Now we're looking at the wide receivers. And, John, this is, on the whole, a relatively unproven bunch and that's not to say there isn't some talent that's not to say these guys haven't played some good football because they have but there's no established star in the wide receiving core for Alabama coming into 2024 they need one to emerge Jeremy Bernard comes in from Washington with some pretty good experience here you see him on a day Bernard really lit it up on a day very impressive back in April um, also, Kobe Prentice is going to be back. There you see Bernard with a big catch uh, from A-Day. Kobe Prentice is back. Another solid player, Kendrick Law, is back. Um, another good player, but nobody we can say is great yet, John. You know, Chase, I think when, when you have a new head coach coming in and totally different offense, totally different offensive staff, I don't think you should have one. I don't think he came into a situation where there was a guy at that position that stood out like, like at a quarterback. When he came in, he knew what the quarterback would do at the wide receiver position. He don't, but he got a guy that was in this program. He's got a guy that they use a lot in different situations. I think if, if outside looking in, I think that's the guy that's going to emerge because he was already in the system. But as a coach and, and, and being here, you have to develop guys. You have to find out who that guy is. As a fan, no, we shouldn't know. As a team, I think they already know. All right, a look at the year Jeremy Bernard put up at Washington last season really quickly. 34 catches on the year for Bernard, 419 yards, a couple of touchdowns. He also averaged 14.3 yards on a few punt returns. Uh, and, John, keep in mind with these stats, he was the third or fourth receiver at Washington last year. They had uh, Roma Dunze and some big-time talent in front of him. Uh, a Dunze, a matter of fact, was a first-round NFL draft pick. So uh, tough for anybody to be the star at Washington last year with a group like that. But nevertheless, uh, he was solid production-wise. He's also, John, a guy who... We know Kalen DeBoer trusts on gimmick plays, trick plays, because last year at Washington, he was kind of the guy they'd run the reverse to or the double pass and things like that. Look, he's followed his coach to Alabama from Washington. His coach want him here. It's not because he can run a lot of gimmick plays. His coach want him here because they, he think he's a special talent. I think he came here because he understands the system. I think he came here because you trust his coach, and I think he came here because his former coach want him to be here and to be a part of this team. All that said, John, you and I have talked a lot about the incoming freshman, Ryan Williams. We both feel like that kid coming out of Sarah Land with the monster year, five-star recruit, could make a big impact as a true freshman this fall. But I think you and I are united on this, John. You got to see it. I mean, you can expect it, but... 
you don't assume it until you see it. Man, there are so many variables. Like as, as a high school, as a college athletes, there's so many variables. It's not just what you do on the football field. It's what you do in the classroom. It's what you do in the locker room. It's what you do when you're away from the field. It's not an easy thing to do for a young man. All the variables have to be together for you to be successful on the football field. All right, we're going to jump straight to a little bit of news from the College Football Hall of Fame. The ballot is out for 2024 Hall of Fame candidates. These guys aren't going in yet from Alabama, but uh, they've been put on the ballot. Nick Saban, of course, he's on the ballot for the first time. No-brainer there for sure. Also, player-wise, two from Alabama on the ballot this year, Mark Ingram and Chris Samuels, former offensive lineman, of course, was Chris Samuels. Black for Sean Alexander was a phenomenal left tackle. And we go to Parker's point right now. Mike Parker, our third co-host, John, wants to know this week who deserves to get into that Hall of Fame more between Mark Ingram and Chris Samuels. It's a great question. I'm not doing Two phenomenal that. A a Alabama players. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Uh, no, I don't think any one of them deserve it more than the other. Both of them are outstanding football players. Both of them was uh, excellent here at Alabama. I think both of them had great NFL career. I don't think one is more deserving than the other. I'm not doing that. You know, I'll say this. I expect if, if only one of the two gets in, I would expect it to be Ingram. I think Chris Samuels was every bit as good a player at left tackle as Mark Ingram was a running back. That's how, that's how highly I think of Samuels as an offensive tackle. He was absolutely dominant. Every time they gave it to Sean Alexander off that left tackle, you know it was going to be four or five yards, if not, if not more. Uh, that being said, with Ingram, you're talking about a guy that won the Heisman Trophy, that won a national championship. Just in terms of some of those accolades that he's got that Samuels doesn't, I think that'll get him over Mark the top. Mark Ingram didn't win a he, Heisman Trophy. Yes, he he did. didn't win a national championship. Uh, yeah, I understand. He didn't win. It ain't like. It's a team award. Yeah, okay, no I question. get it. It's a team You're award. You're like that gave it to Mark Ingram and he said, go score a touch. No, they say team award. That, Both of those are team awards. You know what? If, if, if Mark don't have. The, the team and, the, and, the, and, and what, what the, his teammates was doing to make him successful, he doesn't win the award. I admire your idealism. I'm just talking about how the votes are going to go. Okay, I don't vote. <laughs> I'm pretty sure most of the guys that vote haven't played a whole lot of football. All right, we so, got to yeah, get out get on it. Crimson Cover. We got a whole lot more to come to, so stick around. You're watching CCTV on WVUA 23. Burnham Hawn Exterminators offers termite and pest control solutions for residential and commercial customers in the West Alabama area. Family owned and operated, now in its third generation, we stay up to date with the latest advancements in the pest control industry to protect your family and home from pests. We're an authorized operator of the Centricon baiting system. Burnham Hawn Exterminators, here when you need us. Call us today for your complete termite and pest control services. unique shopping experience of the year is coming to the Tuscaloosa River Market on Tuesday, June 11th from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Join us for Celebrate Local to shop and sample some of West Alabama's locally owned businesses, goods, and services. Presented by Visit Tuscaloosa, Celebrate Local will have over 40 vendors and is free to attend. Don't miss this free event! 
For more information, visit WestAlabamaChamber.com. Don't miss our weekly feature, Health Matters. Doctors from the University Medical Center share valuable information about your health and well being. We speak with doctors from all areas of healthcare, from diabetes to healthy eating to telemedicine. Gain valued information for taking care of you and your family. Watch Health Matters Wednesdays on WVUA 23 News. And for a longer, extended version, go to WVUA23.com. Jeff Mancini here with an incredible offer from Mighty Bite. We're celebrating 15 years and the most lure patents in history. Mighty Bite looks, smells, sounds, feels, tastes, and swims like a wounded bait fish. With millions of pieces sold and fish being caught around the world, Mighty Bite's interchangeable adaptive features transforms the lure so it just works better in almost every fishing situation and for every type of fish. Catch more and bigger fish with Mighty Bite. Call or click today. Welcome back to Crimson Cover Television on WVUA 23. This segment brought to you by Burnham Hunt Exterminators and that fantastic service right here in Tuscaloosa since 1946. Burnham Hunt offers complete pest and termite services for residential needs, commercial needs. They've got the mosquito control and fire ant treatments. And of course, they're licensed operators of the Centricon Termite Colony Elimination System. If you're a homeowner, it's a year round service you absolutely should have. So give Clay Hahn and his staff a call. They'll get you started with a monthly or quarterly pest control program. You can reach them at 553-4433 or go online and visit BurnhamHahn.com. All right, John, SEC team by team previews jump into the Tennessee Volunteers this week. Uh, we've already done Georgia, Florida, and Arkansas. This week we jump into the Vols. Josh Heupel, Fourth season, John, at Tennessee. He was nine and four last season, four and four in the SEC. It was a good nine and four, though. I, he had his spurts. He had his moment. The year before was better. But better. yeah, overall, 27 and 12, 14 and 10 in the SEC. John, what do you think about this Tennessee team? I think they're on the right path. I think it's taking them a lot longer to get where they need to be. I thought. They should have been a contender in the SEC a year ago, two years ago. Uh, I don't think he have much time. Nine and four, uh, but is the nine and four and four and four in the SEC? That's not going to cut it at, at Tennessee. Yeah, two years ago when Hendon Hooker had that big year and got hurt, right. near, and that year that season had a chance to be special for Tennessee. But when you lose your star quarterback, it just kind of threw that season off the rails. This year, a new quarterback stepping in for Tennessee. It's going to be Nico Iamaleva taking over at the quarterback spot. He was a, a freshman last year, played a little bit of football. Huge hype around this kid, John. Came in five stars. He's uh, uh, He got a monster NIL deal, reportedly, and uh, it's his show now. Showed some, some positive signs last year as a freshman, for sure. Brew McCoy coming back after an injury at the wide receiver position. Squirrel White, super fast kid for the Vols, coming back at wide receiver as well. And it's a veteran offensive line for UT. On the defensive side, Bryson Eason, Omar Norman Lott, and James Pierce, three to watch. They're all up front. John, the Tennessee defense is a little front heavy. A lot of experience, a lot of talent in that front seven. Secondary, more of a question. And then really quickly, uh, three key games on that Tennessee schedule this year. September 21st, they'll be on the road at Oklahoma. Man, you October just, 19th, shit. they host Alabama. And November 16th, they're on the road Man, you just at talk. You just talking. You going through. You just talking. Listen. What do you think? In order, because, in, look, okay, great quarterback. Quarterback is great. Yeah, we got a new quarterback coming in. Man, none of that means nothing, man. If you, does, if you don't have a very solid offensive and defensive line, if you don't have a really solid front seven on the defense, if you don't, have a, if you don't have a running back that can run the ball and get you yards when you need it, 
It doesn't matter what kind of quarterback you have. The quarterback can throw for 500 yards a game. But if defensively you can't stop the run, if you can't stop people from running the football when they have a chance, it doesn't matter. Everybody want to talk about quarterback. This man, quarterback, yeah, it's, it's great when you have a good one. But what about the rest of the team? What about the people that count? You got to be able to stop the run. You got to be able to run the football. You got to be able to get turnovers. And you got to be able not to turn the football over. That what matters. That's what make a good. That what make a good quarterback great. Because he hey, can run the ball when he need to. He got a defense that can stop the run. He got. He can get in a situation where he doesn't have to pass the ball all the time. And in a situation where the, the defense doesn't know if you're going to run it or you're going to throw it, you just can't put a, put a great quarterback, Bryce Again, Young. quarterbacks need help. But Bryce Young. I'm Bryce Young arguing. was one I'm of the best quarterbacks on the planet. But we couldn't run the football. He had to throw the football all the time. We didn't win the national championship. Georgia did. And they could run the football. And they could stop the run. All right. Uh, the two areas where they're as far as the line of scrimmage, I think they're going to personally. I think they're going to be strong up there. We just got through talking about how the DL and the front seven is is where most of the talent is on defense. They've got some veteran offensive linemen Compared coming back. Compared to what though? They've got the Mays kid coming back at set. They're going to be fine on the offensive line too. Compared to what? Compared. What do you mean? Compared, compared to, to what? Georgia? Compared to Alabama? Compared to Ole Miss? If they're not. Great compared they, to those teams, then they're not really good. They ought to, I think they're on the line of scrimmage, and I, I would imagine Tennessee will be one of the best four or five teams in the league out of out of sixteen. All right, so they'll, they'll they'll be up there. They'll be fine on the line of scrimmage. Where they're short, John, they're starting all over at running back, and no one knows quite what they're going to get out of the secondary. Those are the two areas I think where it's a wait and see kind of thing. We got to move on though. Going to recruiting really quickly. Alabama coach Kalen DeBoer picks up his first quarterback commitment since he arrived at Alabama. Four star quarterback Keelan Russell, 6'3, 185, out of Duncanville, Texas, is Kalen DeBoer's first quarterback commitment. Here you see some highlights here. Had been committed to SMU, flipped this past week. And he's now headed for Alabama. He'll be part of that 2025 uh, signing he was, class. He was number one quarterback in Texas and was committed to SMU? I don't know if he was the number one quarterback in Texas. I think he was supposed to be like the number six quarterback in the country. Uh, but who knows? You know, all it what, look, at the SMUs of the world, they got boosters too. And it, it, you know what I'm saying? It's, it, and so, you know, if somebody Alabama likes him Alabama boosters is not as good as SMU. <laughs> you're talking about back in the day. Uh, SMU still got yeah, that yeah. all money. Yeah, oh, there's plenty about? of money there. Yeah, there's yeah, there's, yeah, there's, yeah, there's yeah. plenty of money to SMU. All right, uh, well, what about this, John, real quick? This kid has won two straight state titles in Texas at the highest classification in Texas. So the biggest schools with the biggest kids and the biggest rosters and generally the most talent – that's how he. That's where he, some of the best high school football country in the country. He's won two straight state titles. What do you think? Is that? That's impressive. That's impressive. But it's like if you have all the resources, then you should be successful. If you got the resources, then yeah, you should be successful. All right, we'll right see. Right or wrong? Well, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if you got the resources, yeah, you should have been successful. All right, looking forward to tracking Keelan Russell 2025 Alabama commitment. Finally, before we go back to break, uh, Alabama softball season ends. We turn to the WCWS really quickly. The Crimson Tide went 1-2 and two in the Women's College World Series. They got beat by UCLA in their opener. Then they turned around and beat Duke and finally lost to Florida in an elimination game. There you see a big home run by the Gators uh, that kind of put them over the top to end Alabama's season. Oklahoma and Texas, the two schools freshly coming to the SEC, uh, are in the finals. And, of course, they're still representing the Big 12 yeah. uh, un until this fall. But, John, a uh, heck of a postseason run for though. Alabama. Just think about Oklahoma, Texas, and Alabama. When Alabama get back to where they normally are, yeah. that's going to be big. It'll be big. And, yeah. and you know what? For, the SEC is 
I mean, the, the softball in the SEC, uh, when you talk about Florida in there too, a lot of talent. Tennessee, another program that really has it going. It's, Oklahoma's uh, big Oklahoma's softball. won three state straight yeah, no question. titles. So, uh, yeah, I, the SEC is going to own softball. I don't think there's much question hey, about it. y'all better get them girls that NIL deal, that what? TV money. Hell, they play on TV, too. They're gonna get y'all some, better get them girls that TV money. They'll get some of that, too. All right, when we come back, we will turn to Alabama basketball, a little bit of college football playoff news as well. So stick around. You're watching Crimson Cover Television on WVUA 23. In this impersonal world, there's still a local home-owned drugstore that can take full care of you and your family. The good folks at North Pork Pharmacy. Owner and pharmacist Rob Colburn will personally see that all of your prescriptions are quickly and accurately filled and your questions answered. And be sure to check out their gift gallery for the finest in gift selections featuring Alabama merchandise, photo frames, children's clothing, beachwear, jewelry, and more. Remember, when you have pharmaceutical needs, see the man who will take the time to get to know you. Rob Colburn at North Pork Pharmacy, located next to CC's Pizza, Highway 82 in Northport. Burnham Hawn Exterminators offers termite and pest control solutions for residential and commercial customers in the West Alabama area. Family owned and operated, now in its third generation, we stay up to date with the latest advancements in the pest control industry to protect your family and home from pests. We're an authorized operator of the Centricon baiting system. Burnham Hawn Exterminators, here when you need us. Call us today for your complete termite and pest control services. <laughs> this is such an honor. Just recognizing that I do try every day. I strive to be the best version of myself for each child. So I am truly honored that they nominated me for this award. Tiffany Davis, WVUA 23's featured teacher winner. Sponsored by Shelton State and Bryant Bank. It's time to talk with your doctor about your risk for chronic kidney disease, CKD. If you have high blood pressure or diabetes, or if you smoke, you are at risk for CKD. Ask your doctor about your kidney function. The health of your kidneys is usually checked at least once or twice a year. Let your doctor know you are concerned about the health of your kidneys and ask what you can do to keep your kidneys healthy. Welcome back to Crimson Cover. This final segment brought to you by Crimson Village, the most active and fun-loving aging adult community in Tuscaloosa. The residents get the finest in dining, activity, and lifestyle experience, great amenities, and a fine location right off of Veterans Memorial Parkway. Crimson Village offers its seniors three levels of care, including the Tide Memory Care Program, and when it comes to COVID-19, they take the highest of precautions. So give Jonica Ward a call. She's the transition specialist over at Crimson Village, the number 632-6699, or visit crimsonvillage.com. And remember, Crimson Village owns fun. All right, we've just- hey, look, look, I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna let it go. And I know you, I, I didn't mean there. Look, okay, the guy in Texas with all the great resources. Let's take a kid from Tuscaloosa, nine, 10 years old. He want to play football. He gonna charge his. He gonna cost his family two hundred fifty dollars to play football. How many kids are being left out though? You get a kid in Texas. Oh, sure. Yeah. And, and, but I, I then we. It. But then we act like the kid in Texas he played against the best competition. Yeah, because they can pay for it. The kids that can't pay for it is getting left behind. I understand. I understand. All I'm saying is it's tougher to be the quarterback at, at Hillcrest than it is a Holy Spirit. That's all I'm saying. 
If we're talking about yeah, because, Tuscaloosa schools. Yeah, because Hillcrest can pay because, for a quarterback and hold his spirit. Uh, I'm talking about man. the competition. Yeah, because you don't the get, to get the great competition because most kids can't pay to learn how to play because it's going to cost a family with a single parent paying $200 for kids to play youth sport. So you never get a chance to play. I understand. I, I don't disagree with any of that. All right, we only got three minutes to go here. Alabama basketball news. UA is set to approve Coleman Coliseum upgrade to the practice training facility. It's going to be a price tag somewhere in the neighborhood of $56, $58 million or so. I think it'll be 2026 before this uh, facility is, is uh, unveiled and operational. Uh, but... At any rate, that's a big Band-Aid for Coleman Coliseum, John. It is. It is. And I think they need to do something with that. I think it needs to be a little bit smaller. I think the atmosphere, the, the stadium is too big for the atmosphere we, we need. Well, but – right. I, I agree. This upgrade that they're doing for $56 million or whatever it is – it doesn't have. It's not going to change the fan experience really at all. It's new coaches' offices, new practice facility, new locker rooms, training areas, things like that in Coleman. And I get it. I yeah. Get it. I get um, it. All right. Uh, the mail. Excuse me. College football playoff dates have been announced this past week. We'll get to that really quickly. The first round of the CFP playoffs going to be played December 20th and 21st at campus sites. The quarterfinals will be played New Year's Eve and January 1st at bowl sites. The semifinals January 9th and 10th also at bowl sites. The Cotton and the Orange will host the semifinals this year. Championship game January 20th in Atlanta. John, we've only got about 90 seconds left in the program. Quick thoughts on this structure and the fact that uh, I like it. I like it. You don't like it? I, I like I, I, I think it's I think it's better for college football. No I do I, I do like it. I will say this, and you've said this before too, seventeen games is too many games for college it, kids. It is, it is. And if you if you have to go through every round of the playoffs, it's gonna take seventeen but look, games to but win. But look, but look, if you wanna get paid, if, if if these athletes wanna get paid, then you're gonna have to play more games. You gotta work for it. You can't get paid in ten games. All right, we're going to skip the mailbag this week because we're running out of time really quickly before we go. UConn coach Dan Hurley is being courted by the Lakers. John, you're the Lakers guy. You're the NBA guy. UConn, of course, uh, just won a national championship with Hurley. What do you I think don't, of this I don't, I don't like college coaches going to the NBA. Uh, it, it's rarely successful, have been successful. I just don't like getting a college coach to come coach LeBron James. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to go well. It's not going to go well. 30 day transfer window would open on the best program in the country. All those kids could go somewhere He's else. He's not going to the Lakers. You don't think it'll happen? Why? Yeah. Why? It doesn't make sense. All right, why, we got to get For John okay. Copeland, I'm Chase Goodbread. We're out of here. See you next week. I'm BMOC, and I'm going to coach LeBron James. It's good to know that in this impersonal world, there's still a local home-owned drugstore that can take full care of you and your family. The good folks at North Pork Pharmacy. Owner and pharmacist Rob Colburn will personally see that all of your prescriptions are quickly and accurately filled and your questions answered. And be sure to check out their gift gallery for the finest in gift selections featuring Alabama merchandise, photo frames, children's clothing, beachwear, jewelry, and more. Remember, when you have pharmaceutical needs, see the man who will take the time to get to know you. Rob Colburn at North Pork Pharmacy, located next to CC's Pizza, Highway 82 in North Pork. Welcome to Baseball Country, a ministry in West Alabama that reaches far outside the diamond. We create opportunities for people of all ages and backgrounds to encounter Jesus. From baseball and softball training for high school to the big leagues, to men's and women's team sports camps, men's and women's ministry, youth mentored hunts, service projects, custom retreats, and so much more. If you want to get in the game, email Sam at BaseballCountry.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Is your car costing you a lot of money? I swear, every time something goes wrong, it costs $1,000. Stop worrying about what might go wrong with your car. Call now and get your carefree auto card at no cost today. Activate it to protect your wallet from big car expenses. So call the number on your screen right now.
and we'll send your carefree auto card at no cost.